Welcome to part two of my interview with the lovely John Paul. Hello. <laughs> so um you're you're a you're, you're currently playing in the prog band Life Science. <laughs> so yeah. um and they a proper prog band, aren't they? They're full on prog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is yeah, yeah, this is a funny thing. I mean, um, Weirdly enough, I've been doing it for 10 years now. Uh, and it doesn't seem like that long. But I, um, the way it came about is because my brother Ed plays bass with Bonnie Tyler and uh, John Young plays keys with her. And they've known each other for years. Uh, but I never I never met John before. And, uh, and while I was, I was recording an album with Ginger Wildheart and I got a message sent to me from my brother saying... Um, Saying uh, John Young has just had just asked him if he fancied playing bass in this uh, in his prog band because Nick Beggs had played on the album. Yeah, he did the. F- I remember the first album came out and Nick was on there. But yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, he had played on that album, but he couldn't commit to it uh, live because um, because he he was busy playing with Stephen Wilson. Yeah, and Steve Hackett as well at the time. So he couldn't commit to it, uh, and so they needed to get someone sort of permanent in, and uh, so they asked my brother to do it, and uh, and he, he he said no because he hates prog rock. You know? a very <laughs> wise man there. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, Ed's much more of a jazzer, you know. He's uh, yeah. He's Jack- Jacko Pastorius fan. Uh, in fact, I paid. I accidentally paid my brother the biggest compliment, uh, and I'm so glad I did it by accident as well because it meant it was real. But he, he was playing me a whole load of music while I was over at his house once, and he'd been playing me a lot of Jacko stuff. And uh, and then at one point, this music was playing, and I said, um, "Sorry, which which album's this?" He went, "What do you mean?" I said, "Which which Weather Report album is this?" And he just ran up to me and put his arms around me and kissed me. He said, this is me. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest compliment I ever could have paid to him, you know. So, yeah. Nice one, Ed. <laughs> yeah, there's, it's a, it, there's a funny schism between prog and, and jazz. Yeah. Cause it, cause uh, it, they, because it, it's all blurred in between. <laughs> it's it, it's, it's, it's very blurred, isn't it? You know. I can imagine. I can imagine quite a few of the jazzers seeing prog as being slightly too Caucasian. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and who can deny that? I mean, who can listen to Harold the Barrel and say, "Hey, they got the funk." <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, yeah, it's um, it's a it's a funny thing. But um, but yeah, he he knew that I liked it, so so he, he knew I liked prog. So he said, "Why don't you go and audition?" Uh, uh, for this lot then so uh, so I did and uh, I can't in you know it's, it's just, well I wasn't sure if I was going to get in but, but it was at the time we had a drummer called Frosty Beadle that uh, had been the drummer of Cutting Crew in the 80s and uh, he was their drummer at the time and uh, he said the reason that he kind of took to me and my playing was he said that it was fearless he said I didn't seem scared of the instrument I was kind of laying into it and stuff you know and sort of no, uh, and, I, and I'd really, really worked on learning this stuff because it wasn't easy. These were long songs with lots of bits in, you know. And uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> that's the. I, well, you see, on my channel, we've been trying to come up with a definition for prog for many years, and I've, I've, I've got a thing called the progometer. But you've just, you've just rubbished my progometer there with your <laughs> definition, which I think we need to needs to be written down. <laughs> Uh, what was it again? <laughs> Long songs with lots, lots of bits in. It. <laughs> yes, because it's like you know when people go, it, it's it's like when they say, "Well, is is Philip Glass? Is that is that prog? No." See, it hasn't got lots of bits in. It's long, yeah. but it hasn't got lots of bits in. It's well, the, lot, this it's the like... lots of bits in thing. You've you've really you've really nailed something there with that one. <laughs> The funny, you know, the funny thing is, I mean, when we used to do, when well, we used to do the cardiacs thing, it, it, you know, it was, we we came to the conclusion that it was easier to play that music than it was something a lot more sim- simple because every little fiddly bit or daft tune was a bit of a kind of like a a bit of a cue to oh, here's what's coming next sort of thing, you know. So, um, so 
it was constant cues all the time of like what's coming up next rather than getting drifting off getting lost in the middle of playing four chords you know it's it's a funny thing that but i just wonder how much of it is just getting because i was used to tim's style of writing or whatever you know <laughs> it's like, you just had the most weirdest upbringing in music because your first serious <laughs> band was cardiacs and it's yeah. like it's like that's you had to learn that stuff which you know God, <laughs> how the hell well, you know it's like well, this was the thing. Um, before I joined, I was the kind of musician that sat around in his bedroom learning how to play all of his favourite band songs, you know. And because I got to know them a little bit, you know, I thought maybe if I turn up to a sound check next time and one of them doesn't turn up or gets looked, stuck in traffic or something, maybe I could jump up and, you know, have a little <laughs> play with them. So I started learning all their stuff. And this was only kind of two, two years before I joined. So it was just like... Well, that was worth doing, you know, because I kind of knew a load of it before I joined anyway. But, um, but it was weird. There was, there was. I mean, Tim would say in interviews when they say, "Oh, where did you find John?" and he'd just say, "He fell out of the sky." <laughs> you know, he was just like one, one minute he yeah, wasn't there, the next minute he was. That, that's the thing with cardiacs. Is that there's a strange, there's a strange mythos, isn't there as well? He, <laughs> Tim would not answer questions truthfully, would he? That you know, because there was this whole idea that yeah. cardiacs were sort of controlled, weren't they? You yeah, know, but... yeah. There, there was there was a fair bit of that, you know, little yarns being spun and stuff. But there was also, I mean, even in that statement, he fell out the sky. That's that's pretty much, you know, in a in a way, in a round way of speaking, that is pretty much what it was like. It was like this bloke. It feels like this bloke has always been in our world, but he just seemed to turn up one day, you know. And, yeah. Uh, uh, but it, it, there was, there was, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know, I don't know what the qualifications would be to be a cardiac, but, um, but I don't know if I've, for whatever reason, I walked into it and it was, a, it was just, it felt right, you know, it felt like the right thing, you know, and, uh, you know, and I think, and, it, and it's not just the people that are in the band, it was all our mates and stuff. It was, we all kind of gravitated towards one another because there was something slightly dysfunctional about, where we had come from or, or whatever you know it was mm. um but but we all found a kind of this sort of alternative family uh amongst amongst cardiacs and it, you know as i say it wasn't just one just members of the band it was our mates as well you know i mean and there was loads of us this is the weird thing it's such a massive social circle we had then and it's you know i'm, I'm married with a kid now and i live in south wales and i don't ever see anyone, you know, mm. out of choice, you know. Yeah. And uh, and I and it's and I, I kind of look back and think, well, at least I didn't waste my twenties staying in, you know. <laughs> we, we we had a lot of fun, you know. And uh, uh, yeah. But I, but I think that the, the, there's a. I, I say this to my students that a lot of the people I know that have got done something with music, and I think <laughs> or, as long as you do something with music, it's like if I meet someone they're my age. And I go, you still making music? And they go, yeah, I'm still doing it. That's all that counts, isn't it? As long as you're yeah. still doing it, doesn't matter how you do it, you know. As long as you're still doing it, and to get yeah. to that position, I think you those people who focus on one specific thing, you know, that go, I love cardiacs. I've learned all the mm. stuff. I'm into them. I'm going to see all the gigs. And before you know it, you're in the mm. band. And I've heard that story yeah. so often because you you really what you were doing was preparing yourself for that gig. You must have felt like that before you got it that you were you were sort of preparing yourself for a gig that you probably thought you'd never get, and then you got it. You know, it's bizarre. No, yeah, it, 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 when I look back on it, it feels like I almost knew, like uh, it was inevitable, it was going to happen. But if you told me it before it happened, I'd have said no way. God, I'd, I'd be the luckiest bloke in the world if that if that happened to me, you know. But um. But I mean, it's good. the great thing is, is that you know, I did that thing, and um, you know, I, and I was in that band for twelve years. You know, it's a long, yeah. it's a long, all that, you know. And um, but I've come out of it and done lots of other things. Like I do this thing called the Dowling Pool, which is me and a guy called Willie Dowling, who who his original band were called the Grip, and they were like proper hair metal band from the late eighties sort of thing. And uh, and then he went on to do things like Honey Crack uh, in the nineties. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, band, but yeah, yeah, know them. Yeah, but but he's immensely talented bloke, and we would we make these albums together that are sort of little little psycho, psychedelic pop songs, three and a half minutes. So they're not lots of influence taken from British stuff like the Kinks, uh, the Beatles, Madness, uh, uh, 
the ELO, <laughs> you know, all kinds of stuff. Beach Boys, which isn't British, but uh, but yeah. And so that you know, it's been fun to be able to do things like that. And and also the Wild Hearts thing was sort of a so kind of like that. Oh you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is that is kind of real alien to me. I you know, I was I was a I was more art rock than heavy metal, you know. Well, sort of well, thing. But... In the in the nineties, I had a student called Neil Phillips, and he was like uh, just obsessed with the Wild Hearts. And again, he ended up playing with Ginger. He played in yeah, yeah. He was a singer I of know that him. band. He's, yeah, he was in the Yo Yos, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, he's from uh, Worcester. Sort yeah, of he's just up, yeah, just yeah. Now I'm, I'm. I'll have to. Now he's been mentioned in the video. I'll have to say. Oh, yeah, I'll have no, to send him a just... message. Say Neil, you. I mentioned you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no, and it's the same lovely, thing so, i mean I, he, yeah you know and he was just when he was my student at 16 he just loved the wild hearts it, that was his favorite yeah. band you know and he, oh. he had a, you know had a band called b movie heroes and and then he gets That's the gig it. yeah of course he did of course he did yeah no i know all this stuff i know neil neil's great he's lovely real good laugh you know good Good value, <laughs> but but uh, this is this is a really strange thing, you know. I, I the you know the way that people can, if they really focus on something, you can achieve it. I think there's so many musicians yeah. that are trying to be, say, commercial, and they're trying to push all the buttons that will make them employable. And yet, everyone I know yeah. that has just gone, oh, I'm just obsessed with level forty two, or that they, they usually they'll end up with something. It's like a, I got um. A mate called Luke Machine, and he he grew up. His dad was um, just obsessed with it bites. And Luke, when he was three years old, was would would just sit and watch, you know, Francis Dunnery. And he plays left-handed because he just copied it, you know, oh, wow. you know, like that. And, and he, you know, and he, he, he and his dad was and he was obsessed. And guess who he plays guitar for now? For Francis Dunnery, he's the guitarist with Francis oh, Dunnery. Geez. Yeah, and I've, I've done a ton, whole ton of incredible guitar player. Luke's an incredible guitar player. Wow! So does he do all that kind of ham uh, hammering on? Yeah, thing? yeah, he's yeah, he's uh, the, uh, Luke's like um, he was taught by Guthrie Govan, so he's it's he's, he's oh, somewhere wow. he's somewhere wow. between Francis and uh, Guthrie. He's a, he's a oh, killer. Yeah. I, I, he was in a band with me called Kiyama, he's a, he, which was a prog band I did oh, a few. Okay. I, just, I, I, I always well alan holdsworth i always really liked i loved i loved that band uk that he did with john wetton and bill bruford but you know and the, you know and various little bits of his solo stuff and that but i loved that i loved that little, little, little sort, of, sort of thing that he did but also he he did the the whammy bar thing as well yeah that yeah yeah bar. That people like it's weird. There was a resurgence of people doing that in the eighties. Like Jacko Jack Check was was doing that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Played a bit like that. I mean, he's great. He's great songwriter and stuff. And uh, Nick Kershaw as well. Alan Murphy. He was. He was. Alan Murphy of... was a hell of a guitarist. Oh, hell of a guitarist. Yeah. Hell of a, hell of a, see yeah. that Alan Holdsworth's another one. It, it's like cardiacs. Yeah. It's like he, he he just held on in his career. You know, I I, yeah. I remember, like I'd go and see him, and there'd be like. 17 people in the audience watching him and you know you know he was just just about holding well, on and of course he dies and now everyone it's it's and then you start to realize the influence that alan holdsworth had on so many so much music you know i'm so annoyed because uh that prog cruise thing that i mentioned before the cruise to the edge thing which yeah. i played about five four or five times now um alan holdsworth did it one year and i and i, and I watched it and um he was kind of like milling about afterwards. You could go and talk to him, and I was thinking, God, that'd be amazing to go and talk to him. But but the, he, the his bass player was the bloke who played in uh, a band called Yellow Jackets that I, I that were kind Jimmy of Jimmy like Haslip. Yes, Jimmy Haslip. Yeah, plays Jazz upside down, Jimmy's... doesn't he? Yeah. Oh my God! Uh, and I thought I'm never going to get to meet him again, you know. And uh, so <laughs> I sort of made a beeline for him and. Uh, uh, and and chatting away to him, thinking this is amazing. I'm, I never thought I'd ever meet you, you know. Sort of thing. And then went back to me bunk, didn't say hello to Alan Ellsworth, and then and then he died very shortly afterwards. And I was just like ah, damn it, I didn't didn't ever get to talk to him. But you know, it's, I get incredibly starstruck by people already. You know, I mean, I was I was in an airport lounge recently, and there was Marcus Miller there, you know, and. Uh, I, I I did end up getting my photograph taken with him, which is quite weird, you know. But they usually do that. But it presented itself because because I I was playing with Doctor Hook and our guitarist, 
had just been like queuing up for the toilets with him. So they'd got chatting. And then in the end, I walk along and he went, oh, this is our bass player. He really likes what you do. And it's just got a quick photo, <laughs> you know. Which is weird. I never, never usually do that. Cause, cause there's I, no I, went, I went to an Alan Holdsworth gig. Exactly the same thing. It was like in a... It, there used to be a Ronnie Scott's in Birmingham and he played there and he came oh. out to the bar and he was sat at the bar and I thought, I'm not going to talk to Alan Holdsworth, you know, because it's, what are you going to say to Alan Ooh. Holdsworth, you know? But I was oh, with no. I was with a student of mine and he and he was a big Holdsworth fan and he was going, oh my God, there's Alan Holdsworth. So I said, do you want to talk to him? And then you get all fatherly then. And he went, yeah, I really want to. Said, Come with me then. So I took him over and said, Mr. Holdsworth, this is my student and he's a big fan. I'm a big fan. And Alan turns around and well, I said, thank you. And he said, uh, and he goes, I apologize for the performance tonight, which had been re- like, <laughs> you know, I did a video on my favorite gigs and this was the number one gig of all the gigs I've ever seen was this Holdsworth <laughs> gig. And he was like, I'm very sorry for, uh, you know, the performance I had to put you through tonight. It was ever so strange, but he was lovely. You know what? I've heard this before. He does this a lot. This is what he does when people go up and say they enjoyed what he did. That's really weird. You're not the yeah. first person that came yeah. to me. That's so strange. So hang about. Did you did you use your student as an E? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'm a fan, but I would have just sat back in the background and not come over and speak to you. But this young man here, you know, that I've brought over, you you can't say no to this young man. Well, you that's genius. That's you need, you, you need, you, yeah, you need a young man with you, so you can fatherly I've approach. All that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we allowed to do that anymore? I don't think so. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> the um, the the funniest one with me was Billy Cobham because my mm. I've got two drum idols. One's Billy Cobham, oh. one, and one's Narada Michael Walden. Uh, ah, yeah. and, uh, they're, they're my two favorite drummers of all time. And um, did, did you did you interview Narada? Yeah, yeah, and that that it's it, it he. It, Narada's the, unlike any other musician. You know, it's it's like um uh the other day he, he goes he sends me a message and goes, uh, you okay, Andy, I'm gonna give you a call. And of course I'm like, oh god, <laughs> you know, yeah, like yeah. And, then, and, and then it comes through and he's going, Are You okay? Are you doing all right? You know, I just I was thinking of you, and he says, I love you, and I'm sending you some love. That guy is an incredible person i tell no, you well yeah I'm, I'm remembering now i i, I did watch the i went and watched the um uh the interview that you did with yeah. him because we, we we chatted about it yeah, yeah. when we, we met recently and uh uh yeah i know i think because i think i i did I, I talked to you about the dance of life I, I was really into that album having come out of the kind of because i liked that late 70s disco funk type stuff uh, and I, I absolutely love the dance of life. Because he do, he do, he do, he did all those like, and they're brilliant disco albums. It's so yeah. heavy, but he'd all, right at the end, he'd always do a yeah proggy fusion full out thing, you know. Oh, uh, well, that's the title track on that. That's one of my favourites. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, absolute amazing. The drum fills at the end as well. So oh, ridiculous. it's it, it's such a and so many musicians love what he's done. I don't I don't think he gets mentioned. I think because all the other stuff eclipses what an incredible drummer he is. Uh, he's, yeah. He's... Well, did because he played he, he played with Weather Report for a bit, didn't he? Yeah, he it played was... on the best Weather Report track, Black Market. Ah, yes, of course, of course. I've been yeah. I've been playing that today. Have you really? I've had a rehearsal today. Yeah, I I I I play with a guitarist called Roy Marchbank, who is one of the most unbelievable guitarists on the planet at the moment. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah, wow. and, and, and we 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 had a we had a jam up today and played Black Market and uh... yeah, I mean I I love that album. It's weird because I got into Heavy Weather was my in, you know, a very yeah. young age. Uh, started with that, but I I think I went into W. H. Smiths once in about nineteen eighty five or something, and it was just like uh, it had Black Market and it was I was a cheap one, and I looked on the back and I thought oh there's Chester Thompson, I thought oh, I'll buy that then you know and. Uh, <clears throat> not really expecting much, but it's become a massive favourite of mine, that album. I, I really like it. There's some great bits of Jacko on there, but there's also... Who's the other guy? That Alfonso played? Johnson. That's it, because he wrote... Uh, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Hirandu, is it? Is that what it's called? Hirandu? Yes, that's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. The one that's, that's in the. Great. It's like as though that's like where the report went. Right, we don't normally do time signatures, but we'll do one. And it's like, what, what is? Yes. What the hell is it? It's like thirty-three or something. It's just. But I figured out with that for years. I was trying to figure out what the fuck, you know, what's happening yeah. there, you know. Yeah. And then I realised it's bloody easy, and there's an easy way to count. It's like one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. So it's four slow threes and three fast ones. It's yeah. that simple. <laughs> you know? So that's how I mean. Yeah, always... but you, you, you played in cardiacs. <laughs> there you are. It's that simple. It's just three, three. Uh, three and maybe another three, and then, then, then three, three, three. But that's fast three. <laughs> it's that well, simple. This is, the thing. this is the thing in cardiacs that it was never. Well, very rarely it, it was uh, ever a set time signature. It was just how the stuff went. You know, a bit like the way John Lennon would write things like uh, "Good morning, good morning." And now it's it's that's not straight four, but I don't think he was thinking about fours. A bit like Sid Barrett, you know, he would just like write stuff that where the lyrics would fit in, you know. It's such yeah, a strange yeah, yeah. But Tim stuff was a bit like that, you know. It wasn't like. But um, then you'd have to work it out, though, wouldn't you? You'd have to sit there and yeah. count it out, and. But I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be thinking in terms of um, time signatures, though. You know, I mean, I, I wouldn't even know how to count something like there's one track called ideal do you know this track at all well, it, it's, got, it, it, it's not on an album it's on a ep but it's got this bit in the middle that goes <laughs> that is where it changes but, that, yeah. it, but it's like everything's playing it in unison you know and it's uh but i hear it wrong I have to skip half a beat in order to get in there because I hear it as one, two, three, four. When it's actually one, two, three, four. Yes, yeah. So it's, um, and I can't get, you know, when you hear something wrong, you can't retrain your head to hear it as it, as it was probably written. Uh, well, that's one of those. And apparently tarred and feathered, because it's just got that pedestrian sort of dun gat dun gat dun gat yeah. all the way through it, and you've got that. Da, 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 da. Uh, Tim once told me that uh, he's the only person that that hears it the way it was written, uh, because because um, everyone else hears it over that four four beat because that's what they hear, you know. But apparently, it's not like that. It, it's cut up into different times timings and stuff, and. Uh, to this day, I have no idea what he was talking about. You know, and, well, uh, they, people, I don't think music listeners know this, but um, everyone I know has played like proggy stuff. Mm. When you talk to people in the band, everyone's counting it different. It's yeah. so often the case. She goes, yeah, how do you count this? Though I counted like two sevens and then, then well, I was counting like five, five and so and so, you know. Well, uh, yeah, I tell you, the band, the band that I know that were, that were the kings of that were, were a band called Levitation. And the singer was a, a guy called Terry Bickers, who had been in the House of Love. And the guitarist was Christian Hayes, that had been uh, Bick, who had been the guitarist yeah. in Cardiacs. And uh, and they, they they always did that. They, they all heard it in a different timing. But they had one that was in, OK, it could have been in 3-4. So, so it was like... One of them's going, this is sounding very Philip Glass, actually. And somebody else in the band would be hearing it as, one, two, three, four. So, and every member of the band, apparently, when they got talking about it, turned out they, the emphasis of the arm was always somewhere different because, um, but it made for some real kind of weird psychedelics and stuff. You know, they were very much a sort of wall of sound sort of band. And, yeah, I remember, uh, I, I remember them. Yeah, I remember them like early yeah. 90s, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, bordering on shoegazing. Yeah, way, that was right. But, yeah. But but something else, you know, and, and certainly a kind of element of early Pink Floyd, you know, when they do those big kind of wig outs, those big sort of like 
drawn out bits and stuff. But but I love the idea of that, that everyone's getting a different experience, not just in the audience, but in the band as well. Even they don't know what's going on. And like you said, you don't, you don't read music. So all this complex, bonkers stuff you've played, you've all had to do by ear? Yeah, I mean, with me, what, what because what when I was in this band that I was in before Cardiacs called Ad Nauseam, we had a keyboard player that was very up on theory. Now, when I... <clears throat> When I had to teach him the the, the keyboards, uh, the keyboard stuff, because I I wrote the stuff and I arranged it all and I all the bits I'd come up with. So I, I was teaching the keyboard player out of play stuff, and he started um, writing down the names of the chords. and And it, it was from then that I learned about kind of inversions and um, and chord numbers, like augmented fourths, for instance. You know, I, I had. Um, for me, it was just the sound of the devil rather than, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, Black Sabbath, you know. Well, of, of which there is bloody loads of that on um, cardiac stuff as well. <laughs> you know, yeah, loads I of tritones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and what, what I found out, I, I got asked in an interview when I was I joined the band about the whole tone scale, and I didn't know what it meant. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and then, now I know it's the, it's that thing that they do all the time. And that's all over cardiac stuff. But I think I think Tim got that off Devo because Tim was a um, well, all of us were huge Devo fans, and uh, uh, yeah. But it, it's funny. Uh, well, and what, what was what was Tim's music theory like? I mean, he, he wrote this out, didn't he? He he <laughs> must have been able to write. There's no way you can compose stuff like that. He he didn't he didn't go to he didn't do music at school he didn't go to any kind of edu musical education yeah. uh, uh, further education he, what he did what he did was started playing guitar um, he was into um, the Who and David Bowie you know that was his two yeah. things and he um, uh, and he liked the sound of Mick Ronson's guitar so he decided to play guitar and <coughs> play guitar and he. Um, uh, what was it? Yeah, and then he, and then when it came to um, like getting his ideas together, he suddenly got into the idea of uh, writing music because he really liked the way the squiggles looked on the bit on the paper. And to him, it was this kind of aesthetic, this kind of like you know, it was, it was a the kind of like the way it looked, you know. And uh, uh, and he said he just liked the, the look of the squiggles on the paper, so he learned how to do it. And, that is uh, bonkers because. Um... Yeah. There's a. It's exactly the same reason why Frank Zappa started composing. He didn't know what it sounded like. He just liked yeah. the drawings of the notes on the ah, stave. That's yeah. what. He, that's it's what very, he liked. Yeah. And, visual, yeah. Yeah, and it's like um, there's a guitarist called Chanan Haspal who's got um, a YouTube channel. Mm. Chanan's an insane guitarist as well, and he's he's right. got a PhD in Zappa. Oh, got a doctorate wow. in Zappa, and he's analysed it to death. And and one of the things he's he's made the argument that Zappa didn't have perfect pitch, couldn't hear the compositions he was playing. It was literally he would create the stuff to write to give to the band to hear what it sounded like. And there's an interview with Zappa oh. where where Zappa says, you know, says my band have all got perfect pitch. You said they all you they just play something and they can hear it and play. He says whereas I have to pick the guitar up and. I have to find the notes, and and I thought that's fascinating because yeah. it just shows because Zappa's a genius. He's a musical yeah. genius, but it shows you don't yeah. need to have those sort of theory in ears and being perfect pitch. All that mm. is not, you know, because no. without Zappa, there's no, without Zappa, there's no none of that music, regardless of whoever oh, got in the band. Know, the other day, I was thinking about the Black Page, and I don't believe. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you hear that song, but, but I listen to it, and to me, it's a bunch of really good tunes, yeah, uh, and this mental stuff that is far beyond my comprehension. You know, I, I, I don't know what's going on timing wise in it, but I wonder. I want to put out the idea that perhaps the only people that know it know exactly what's going on in that song are the people that have read the manuscript and learned it. You know, like so, for instance, the members of the band. But I mean. I mean, for instance, if you hear that song, can you can you sing along with uh, with that tune exactly as it is in perfect time? Because I, I know I can't. Yeah, I can. 
just about. Oh, really? Um, bam. Da ba da ba da ba da da. Da 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 da. Two, three, four, five, ba da da da. Wow. What did they think? What did they think? Ah, maybe not. So wait a minute. So did did you did you look at the manuscript? Yeah, I I I've I've studied it and uh, it's ah right. Yeah, there's that. It's it's uh, that that which is the fourth or fifth bar which goes one two three four one two three one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five six and bang you know uh, and 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 up to there I I I sort of know it and I I I can just about get through. I've studied that stuff. But what's really yeah. interesting is, um, is like you said, it's the tune. If you didn't mm. have the tune, you know, it's it it's like um, uh, on on Montana when Frank Zappa goes, uh, "I don't care if you think it's silly, folks. I don't care if you think it's silly, folks. That's a ten over four. But ah, I, that, and that's yeah. how I think a ten over four. I go, I don't think of yeah. da, 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 you know, one, two, ah, yeah, three, okay, da, da, yeah. Da, 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 bang, and that's ten over four. You know, that's how I. It's the it's the melody that that that's the key. It's always the melody, isn't it? If there's no yeah. tune there, you can't do it. Because that was the one thing I've ne I'd never heard that before. Uh, somebody somehow fitting in values of five over a over a four you know so yeah now that i mean there's a song on on a very a very early tim smith composition from about 79 ish or something and he plays drums on it as well i think he plays everything except for woodwinds and sax that sarah smith his wife uh played uh, I think that was I did that before they were married. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, but but anyway, it was that was him trying to experiment, getting his head around these sort of uh, <laughs> these kind of things. So it's very sorry. sorry. <laughs> it's all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he puts in the odd seven as well. <laughs> Sheffield stuff. University. That's, a, <laughs> What's that's that? how I do seven. Oh, is it? Oh, Sheffield University. Sheffield University. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! What a, one what of the it? one of the things I've loved about this interview because we the first half we did a proper one, but I thought <laughs> I thought this one let's just chat like musicians chat. Let's just <laughs> do a normal conversation like a, like you know when two musos get together and we have a nice chat. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, I wonder what happened. That was in, I didn't want to say it to you, but I thought, we'll just chat whatever happens on this one. And in the end, what what we've done is basically gone, and you've gone, yeah, well, what about, that's all we've done. It's like, this is surreal. Yeah, yeah, it's going to really piss off non musicians. Yeah, non musicians, this is what, it's like, this is what you get when musicians get together isn't it you know you talk about your favorite bands yeah you know and you yeah. and you and you go hey, how do you do that and how do you do this you know it's like well, that's... We, we, we've committed the card and we'll see in there because i remember talking to a bit christian hayes sort of thing he he, ne he never got into zappa never really got it and he said he said to me it's fucking Really annoying when you get around Zappa fans. He said it's like they're like Monty Python fans. It's like, <laughs> oh, that bit where it goes, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> <laughs> and they do. It is. It's like it's like we're all reciting the fucking pipe parrots. Yeah. Thing, you know? yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, and, and when he said that, I was like, oh my god. I yeah, we, that's I what we've been. That. That's what we've been doing, hasn't it? That's exactly what's happened on this we've video. Been parrot I... sketching. We've been parrot sketching for the last forty minutes. You know? <laughs> So what are you doing at the moment? I'm going to go back normal like a proper interview. So what are you doing? What are you doing at the moment? Um, I don't what's, know. What's next? On? <laughs> well, it's, it's got a bit quiet at the moment. I'm about to start doing some stuff that, um, uh, uh, yeah, there, there are a couple of things in the pipeline that uh, I'll wait and see if if they come into fruition or not and uh, before I talk about them, but, but uh, there are more life science gigs coming up. I, I, I had a job playing bass with Dr. Hook, all that stuff, stuff has stopped for the time being. So I don't know if that'll ever start up again mm. or not really, but 
uh, but that was great fun. But um, but yeah, not doing that now. So I, I have never I'm... known a musician that plays such varied stuff as you. <laughs> you yeah. you seem to do it absolutely. Oh. It's it's all linked together. It's all links. Yeah. But you're really disparate. You're you're not you. You're not the run of the mill prog musician whatsoever. This no, bizarre, you well, know, it's I, like I Doctor Hook, Wild Hearts, Life Science, yeah. Cardiacs. You know, it's... Well, I love it. I love it all. You know, I love playing with the Wild Hearts. I love playing with um, Doctor Hook. Was great fun. You know, playing this this stuff that I kind of knew. Uh, but what was brilliant about Doctor Hook was the singer Dennis Lecourier. You know, I, I, you don't know when you, when you join a band like that if you're going to get on with the turn or not, you know. Uh, and uh, you think, you know, it, it might be a kind of nice thing we sort of say hello every every now and then. Sort of. But we we became really good mates, you know, and he's a really, really lovely bloke. Total Anglophile as well, which dates back to him being a Beatles fan in the 60s. And that. But huge XTC fan. And... Uh, I thought that he might be one of those XTC fans that got into them when Dear God sort of took off over yeah, there yeah. in like 86 and then in that late part of the eighties. But um, no, I, I got chatting to him and he said, uh, he said, he said, yeah, he said, I, I went into a, a, a terrible accident, by the way, but I, I went into a record shop and I, I, picked, I looked at the cover of Go To and I thought, I gotta have that. I don't know what it sounds like. Gets it back, listens to it, loves it. And he, but then says to me, you know, and I, I liked it and everything, but I'm glad that Dave Gregory joined. Otherwise, it would have been the Barry Andrews band. <laughs> now, I wasn't expecting any of that, you know, and yeah. it turned out that, that Dennis is like a real fanboy, like 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 I am with this kind of music stuff, you know. And he, but God, he knew his stuff, and he was even talking about the fact that the the American version of um, English Settlement had tracks missing off it that that the English version had. And, you know, we're, we're now talking about different versions of XTC albums. And that yeah, album. well, that's what that's what musicians are. They're music fans. They, they, it's it's they, well, that's what it all well, is. That's not it. all of them, though. Not all of them. I mean, Willie Dowling, who I work with, he not really done barely this sort of stuff. Even Tim, uh, he had the stuff that he listened to when he was younger, sort of thing. But he, he, he didn't really listen to to much music, sort of thing. Whereas somebody like uh, Big Christian Hayes, I mean, he's still on on the quest for looking out for great stuff to listen to. Sort of thing. a lot of old stuff. Well, I mean, when we meet up, we'll listen back to a lot of old. Old stuff, but it's great. I'll get a really different experience with Christian than uh, Big. <laughs> so I'm calling him Christian so that people know who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. But it's so weird. He's big, as well as I'm just... But I have a very different experience talking to Big about music to what I would, I don't know, Tim or, or, or somebody else. I mean, because we're the, the st I'm into everything, you know, so many things. So I know that I can get a great conversation with with Bick about, you know, like left of centre, strange stuff and post-punk and new wave and all that kind of stuff. And uh, 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 whereas, um, yeah, I don't know, I, I might I might chat to somebody else about, I don't know, Sting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why I said Sting, but I'm just trying to think of the opposite. <laughs> John, John we, 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 we've got one minute left of this Zoom meeting, so I'm going to have to pull it to a very... Very quick ending. Okay. Uh, then. So uh, I've really enjoyed chatting to you. It's been absolutely, we've had a right laugh. You know, we're going to yeah, do this again. Yeah. We'll, you know, I think we'll come and have a, think of some other topics to have a chat if you're up for that. And we'll have another yeah, chat. Yeah, definitely. No, thanks, Andy. It's, I mean, it's really, it's really lovely to sort of do this, you know. It's sort of good fun. You know? All right. I'm going to, I'm going to stop recording. Bye-bye, everybody. Say bye-bye, John. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.